A um, close cousin to our density is what I've called concentration. Um, in our map, um, we saw that we had um, our density tool um, out there. We had our part density, and in this density, we also have kernel density. And the kernel density is somewhat the same, but again, far different. One of the things about the point density is that the highest density does not necessarily have to be at a location where there are many observations. It is basically just the location where there are most observations for inner search radius. Um, and for many situations, what we're interested in, in is seeing where do we have the highest concentration, where do we have the most addresses, because that might be a good place to create a station. So we're not only interested in seeing how many people can go to the station within a, in, within a distance, but we want to optimize so the fewest possible, so people have to go the shortest direct uh, length. So there we use our concentration concept. The um, um, we can compare this if we look at our density tool. We basically created a series of uh, circles around each one, and then you just count how many overlapping circles are here. If we look at our kernel density, what it does is that it, on top of each point, um, drops a blob of ice cream. I know it's a mathematical function that there, and there are different mathematical functions it can use, but um, but you can visualize it as the effect of dropping a blob of ice cream on top of each point. So we have it in this graph, but down here, just in in two dimensions, um, we have a point observation here. So this is the blob that belongs to that one. This blob here is from this location here, so that's this blob. So if you put a blob here, which then floats on top of the other blob. Over here we put, there's two blob, dots close to each other, so we put first a blob and another blob, and this blob from over here also fits on top of it. So the kernel density basically measures the depth of our blobs, or to be more mathematically, what it does is it but it, its calculation is based on the area underneath the curve here. So this is, as I said, in a one-dimensional, we look at a, a, a direction along here. But in our two-dimensional space, these will be shapes, and uh, then they will have a volume underneath each of the curves, and that is the one that we operate on in our kernel density. If we look at this map here, which is the same points as on the previous ones, we can see that our highest density also are where we have the most dots. The dots are uh, gold coins found on the island of Bonhot. So the current density is a way of focusing and saying where do we have the most? Um, but the number that you get out of it can be a bit more difficult to interpret because that is, let's say, the area underneath all those blobs, the heights of the blob, if you wish. So, I'll just go here and uh, get rid of this one here. And our stations. So we want to know where we have the most addresses in Copenhagen. Uh, we have only have been working here with our um, street addresses, our Elgansetrasse. So I'll just start out by loading um, the address, which is the individual doors of, in behind which families live. And we got it down in here, and it, this is then the standard address set. And there are, of course, many, many more. There's about half a million of um, these addresses here. And I want to know where are the most of these dots. So that's what I want to do. So I'll create a new model. And in this model, I will include my addresses. 
and I'll then go down and find my kernel density and run this okay. so again in my kernel density it will again have a search radius so and is how if it is how much out our blob should um, should uh, float so um, I can uh, and if I had so I just set the same to 1000 again so the, the my ice cream blob won't float further than one kilometer again here we can have our square kilometers and we can calculate our density or a expected count we'll just keep it with the density and if I had and if I knew how many persons there were in each family I could then populate these address from how many people there were in each address and therefore not have a density of address but a density of people living there but never mind so this is how I would have it and again there I don't want to I want to work on the flat earth and not the round earth add the result to my display and run my model this tool takes somewhat longer to run but now it has run we can look at the result of what has happened here just close my model yeah and we can see this blue background color so I'll just uh, get rid of the addresses themselves so we can see this is where we have the highest number of addresses and we see here clearly there are some areas that are a bit unsupported when it comes to stations so the, high, the darker the blue the more dense um, we have our addresses so it was a tool that took in um, our vector points and then calculated a raster layer that has this um, density of addresses um, sometimes our oh, concentration of address sometimes this is um, a, um, a bit complex to operate with these um, blobs of ice and how cream that has smelted on top of each other and um, and how they are distributed so 